Hello everyone, my name is Raijin, and Rooster Teeth animation is not looking good at all right now. Most, if not all, of the animators there are gone. Their contracts have expired. Over the last three weeks, there's been an announcement after an announcement of people who are no longer working there. And so I need to make a video to explain what this all means, what brought this on, hopefully assuage some of your worries, things like that. It is very easy with something like this to assume the absolute worst, so I encourage everyone to please stick around until the end of this video so that I can inform you as best as possible about what has all happened. I want you to have the full story, and that's just not quite something you can get by only watching half of a video. Over the last month, I've seen about nine or so different animators say that they no longer work at Rooster Teeth Animation because their contract has ended. There's a lot that goes into that, so I made a Twitter thread a couple days ago that explains it as briefly as possible. So, first and foremost, Rooster Teeth Animation is made mostly, or was, made mostly of contracted workers. And ultimately, one thing that keeps them contracted is the show's budgets that they work on. If there is no budget, there are no workers. If you don't have any work to give your workers, what are you really paying them to do, right? And we actually have seen what felt like a mass exodus from Rooster Teeth animation before. It happened earlier this year. And that was for a different stage of the production pipeline. And now it is for the animators specifically. Before, I remember, I believe it was Cesar Alter Garcia, who was one of the people who was involved. I think it was the Look Dev team, the team that's involved in actually developing the systems to make Ruby look the way that it does, or something to that effect. And I personally believe that their contracts are not being renewed because there is no more work to give them. So, in other words, Ruby Volume 9 and the two Warner Brothers crossover movies with Ruby are now fully animated, or they are animated enough to a point where they don't need as many animators. And now, these workers can't stay for Volume 10 because it hasn't been greenlit and doesn't have a budget. And, real talk, I don't know why Rooster Teeth decided to work on all three projects at once and not do Volume 9 earlier and then work on the two Justice League movies. Quite frankly, and this is putting it mildly, that's poor decision making and doesn't allow Rooster Teeth Animation to get a return on their investment before continuing on with more work. Volume 10 could probably get greenlit a lot faster, and the workers could all keep their jobs for longer. I think that was part of the deal for making the two Warner Brothers crossover movies, that they had to start them sooner. It may not have been on Rooster Teeth management specifically to decide when they're going to be made. Though it wouldn't be the first time that we have seen poor management from Rooster Teeth animation. I allude to the Volume 9 rigging team. If you're not familiar, Ariana Filippini at one point had come forth about how she was put under a massive amount of crunch and the rigging team itself had been put under a massive amount of crunch for Ruby Volume 9, though after she left there was a team of five people instead of just the two or three max that she had when she was there, so they're not under as much crunch after she left because there's more people to handle that workload. Anyway, now, Rooster Teeth Animation is stuck with three major projects in development and no more money for their own workers, and people who have been employed for seven or eight years now at Rooster Teeth Animation, and were there when Monty was still there as well, probably will find other jobs and won't come back for Volume 10 if it does get greenlit, and at that point the show would continue with less experienced staff. So what I'm talking about, and the two biggest sort of bombshells here, are Joel Mann, who is the animation director at Rooster Teeth Animation, and Melanie Stern, who is the lead animator for Ruby Volume 9. Those two people, Joel Mann, had worked for eight and a half years at RT Animation. He worked alongside Monty. He's one of the people who's worked at Rooster Teeth Animation for the longest. He started out as an animator back in the poser years, and then when it switched to Maya, he became lead animator, animation director after that. And Melanie Stern as well. She had been brought on, I believe, for Volume 3, maybe it was Volume 4, and eventually became assistant lead animator and lead animator, going through Volume 8 and now Volume 9. 
And on top of this, Roost Teeth Animation, as I said, is made of mostly contracted workers, except for executives and management. But that's the thing, Rooster Teeth Animation used to actually give its workers salaries, once upon a time. According to former Rooster Teeth employee Caden Jensen, its employees didn't have to worry at one point about having their contract renewed instead of having it expire, so that they could keep working. But, after a certain point, they were switched to contract positions, which in part makes it easier for them to be let go. And now, we're seeing this. This is genuinely a lot to unpack, but I want to stress that you do not, in any way, need to worry about Volume 9 releasing. Volume 9 will come out. It is still scheduled for early 2023 next year, and we just started December, so that's looking closer than ever. As many of these animators have tweeted their announcements, they've also reinforced that Volume 9 is still coming out. At no point did any of them ever allude to some idea or some sentiment that Volume 9 is in trouble in any way. For the most part, they've said, I still hope you look forward to Volume 9 or something to that extent. And what this means is that ultimately the animation stage of the pipeline is mostly, if not entirely, finished. And now, the production is at a point where they need to add environments and effects in. The sound design still needs to be finished as well. So, it's not like the animation is done and it's just sitting in a vault somewhere until early 2023 when it releases. Like, there is still more work that needs to be done, even though the animation itself is done, if not close to being done. There are other teams later down the line that still need to get their work done. And, as I mentioned, the two Warner Brothers crossover movies, both of those are still very much in development, and both will eventually air. And yes, by the way, there are two Justice League Ruby crossover movies being made. I've seen not everybody has gotten that memo yet. It's not just one movie, it is a part one and a part two, so it is two movies. But after Ruby Volume 9 and after those two movies, though, there is not anything being worked on. Yet, that doesn't necessarily mean the end of Ruby, though. It just means that Volume 10 has not yet been greenlit. It hasn't been given a budget. Nobody's been told to work on Volume 10 yet at all. And I believe that once Volume 9 does air, the best case scenario is that there will be a meeting with some higher-ups at Warner Brothers Animation where they greenlight Volume 10. And when that happens, the people who are hired to develop Volume 10 will be entirely new. People like Joel Mann and Melanie Stern, who both had seven or eight years working on Ruby, they have enough experience where they should be able to find work fairly easily now. And some of the animators who were let go have already begun another job. Yet there are also people like Aaron Trochet, who said that if they were given the opportunity to work on Ruby again, they would do it. So, the best case scenario is that Volume 10 does get greenlit and Rooster Teeth does make it, but they start a lot later than if they had already been working on it right now in some form, if they had the money to do that. Anyway, that's the video. I hated making it, but neglecting to make it would be a disservice. It is quite important news. Once Ruby Volume 9 gets a release date, and it will, and it will release in full, I will make a video to let you know. I will also, pretty soon here, upload my playthrough of Ruby Aerofell, sometime before the year is over. It will be a Let's Play series of five videos. So like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of that. As always, all my sources are linked in the description below. I'm Raijin Rising, have a good one.